Okay. All right. Here we go. Um, this is uh, Mike from New York Jets News. Um, get right into the questions. I know you're a busy guy. Um, so, uh, so how's the fire for treating you so far? <laughs> it's fine. It's uh, it's good actually. The fact that I, I mean, I like where I live. I, I live in an ideal place where I've always wanted to live. I live in Southwest Florida. Uh, so it's a beautiful place. And then, so I get to kind of do some of those things that I really like. Uh, I go fishing and I play golf. And then the fact that I've gotten to work with the media, I really enjoyed that. You know, I do a, um, I work for ESPN Radio and SNY Television. So uh, actually we have a new show coming up on ESPN Radio. Uh, every Sunday morning during the season from 9 to 11, I'll, I'll oh, do it with uh, Anita Marks. Yeah, we're going to do the show. So it'll kind of be a perusal of the NFL and then uh, Jets, Giants, and, you know, big games, et cetera, et cetera. So, and then I do a post-game uh, Jets show on SMY television. So it keeps me, keeps me plenty busy, and it's just enough that, uh, that, that I very much enjoy it. I, I would uh, guess that compared to the uh, the NFL schedule, even though you're still working, it, it, it must be uh, really nice to have some free time for your other interests. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's not even anything like the NFL schedule. <laughs> I, I did that for a long time. There's nothing mm-hmm. like that. But, now, I still do a thing also where I've been uh, contacted by a number of colleges and they bring me in, and I put things in for them. Actually, actually, kicking game, as it's been kind of watered down in the NFL, uh, has kind of been uh, bolstered in college football because of the fact that, you know, they're not getting the number of touchbacks, et cetera. So, so they, yeah. they bring me in to help. So actually last week I spent several days at Penn State. Um, I, I work for Texas A&M. I put things in for LSU. So I, I do, whenever I have some free time, I also do that. Yeah, I remember during the, uh, the two at back to back AFC championship run, um, when our offense was, and the Jets offense wasn't moving and the defense was dominating, it was the special teams that would, uh, you know, won a few games to say the least. Um, is that pretty much what motivated you to retire? To retire was the, the way they changed the wedge and then they moved the kickoff. Um, kind of taking away your ability to to make that difference? It, it certainly uh, added to that fact. I thought I would retire at that particular age anyway. I coached for 30 years, but I've had, I've had zero motivation to return. I've been offered several jobs, mm-hmm. and the fact that, it, as I told a number of general managers, uh, the job that I had all those years in my opinion, my opinion, it doesn't yeah. exist today. And it's there, but it's not the same. And, I, and I'm not interested in that. So if I can't contribute in the fashion that I, I was able to, then I have no interest. And you did interview for uh, the head coach at, at one point. Am I correct on this? Yes. Yeah, I did. You, uh, do you think it, if you got that role when it was up, do you think you'd still be coaching today? Um, uh, so that's a tough question to answer. I, I don't know. Um, I thought that at different times in my career I was better prepared than others, but I think if I look at the big picture, um, my background would have prepared me uh, to be a head coach. Now, how I would have done in that role, well, no one no, no one knows that. Mm-hmm. It's something that uh, when I look at the transition, the way people move today fairly readily through the league, uh, when I have started, there were so many uh, very prominent head coaches. And, and now, of course, you, you, you really don't have quite that number. You have just a couple. And so I think it's a little bit different. Uh, I think I could have done it without, without question, but I don't know that. I'm not remiss terribly in that I didn't have the opportunity. It just didn't happen. Sometimes things happen, and I had some other issues that got in my road. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I don't. I don't look like I really lost anything. I would have loved to to try it, but it didn't yeah. happen. And um, and so I don't look uh, at my career with any sense of regret. Gotcha. Um, how's your health nowadays? 
I'm doing very fast. I had a particular surgery on my leg, which uh, enabled me to kind of become a normal person again. Uh, it was very complex, mm-hmm. but, yeah. but it worked. The doctor at Sloan Kettering, John Healy, that uh, he's the resident genius in America, trust me. And what, what he actually helped create for me is just phenomenal. And it worked. It worked. It's enabled me to uh, pretty much lead a, a normal life. In, in golf, I hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm back. I, I don't play all the time, but I'm back playing. Actually, I'm, I'm going okay. I, the last time I played, I played pretty well. Yeah, yeah, I haven't I, I live on too much. Course. I live on the golf course. So, and, I, and I'll play I'll play more. I, I just kind of felt like it, or I was busy, or, or I, I would get on the boat. But I'll actually get back to that. Um, just to, uh, you know, being a fan of the team and, and covering them now, um, you know, I, I watched them on the sidelines for a long time. Um, I, I'd have to say I was a little intimidated to call you. Um, do you feel you are that no-nonsense in all aspects of your life, or do you feel like how you were on the on the field is that you're a different guy? I probably on the field. You've been, you've been talking to me for 20 minutes now. What do you think? <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I think it was actually really nice that we even, even took this call. I'm really, I'm really not. No, I'm, I'm happy to do it. The thing, yeah, I have a, a – yeah, when I, when I was working in business as business, yeah, I, I thought, yeah, I, I, could, I could have certainly projected that. But I have so much respect for the business that I was in. Mm-hmm. And in all in all different aspects of it, um, I actually and now I'm kind of on how I'm under, but with the media, I always respected what their job was. Uh, sometimes how they went about it, but it's you know, it's there. It, I mean, but I, I certainly respected that role and that job. I try to treat those people with that respect. Now, in some instances, that could be difficult for some of the guys, but for the most part, it was really pretty easy for me. I feel that way about them, and certainly uh, respect what they do. Do you um do you feel there's one guy out there who who kind of gave you your your big break or gave you the the, the first coaching job that true. kind of? Well, there's two two people actually. Um, one helped me get started a long time ago was Frank Kush story of how I met him is a very, I, I won't tell it actually, it's very unique, I'm going to save it for another format, because it's an incredible story, but he did help me and gave me an opportunity, but the guy that, the guy that, that has said yes to me, and that's what has to happen sometimes, you know, you're seeking jobs, or you're trying to move forward in any field, someone has to say yes, and for me it was Don, it was Don Shula, and Coach Shula called me offered me a job with the Miami Dolphins. Uh, he's the most prominent coach in NFL history, really a great football. And and so to, to be able to go and work for him uh, it was just an incredible experience. Everything that you would, would hope a great coach like that would be, he was. He really was. And and it was fun for me. Um, it, w- it wasn't easy. It was tough because he's tough. But at first, you know, I, I, I kind of persevered through some things. I learned the ropes. I earned my way. And that's all he asks. And then after that, I had an incredible relationship with him, which I very much cherish. And, uh, and so he's the guy that really gave me my start. Uh, you know, other things, you go back to your, the way you were raised, my mother and father, high school coach, things like that that I think all put me on a particular track that I was very fortunate. The guy in the NFL that, that made the biggest influence in my life was Don Schuler. No question. Um, yeah, you worked with Rex for a while. Um, was it, was it Say fun? Say it again. I couldn't hear that. Say it again. Uh, that, that, you know, um, I, your time with uh, Rex Ryan, um, was it fun working with someone who was a a go for it guy, do you feel like that allowed you to, to do your thing as a you know, with the fates and the um you know, setting up interesting situations on special teams and whatnot? Well, well I, I I like well, I, I talked to Rex yesterday and, and I watched uh, the um 
and I wa- watched the uh, Real Sports uh, Brian Elton show with them and uh, Anthony Jennings. Uh, I very much enjoy working with Rex. I think he's a good coach. Um, he, he's, he's very emotional, which sometimes he shows. Uh, you know, and it, 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 it can come in negative forms occasionally, but most of the time he's really a positive person. Uh, I like him. I, there's more depth to him than what a lot of people would, would realize, and um, and I wish him nothing but the very best at Buffalo. Uh, and actually, I think he'll end up doing okay up there. They, they, I think he'll do just fine. So, no, those were good topics. They were good memories. Uh, we had a uh, we had a good group, not just Rex, but Callahan, Brian Shot, and I learned our, our whole group. Uh, Mike Petten. It was it was a good group, and it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun to be a part of, and uh, just a just a very enjoyable time for me. Now, as it went along, and it got you know after those first couple of years, well, there was a there was a little bit of a philosophy change that didn't come from Rex. Mm-hmm. It was a little bit of a change. The way we were, all of a sudden we were going to be a quarterback dominated team, and and that was difficult to deal with. Um, I think I think the franchise headed in a, a direction that it wasn't. Uh, prepared for with that personnel that we had, and all of a sudden we weren't as good. We just weren't, and uh, and that was very difficult. And those times were extremely frustrating, and and made it uh, made it a little easier to step out. Yeah. From an outsider's point of view, um, I, I feel like it it's bittersweet this year because it's like the team got the band back together, and after Rex kind of suffer with the rest of a, you know, with some t- traditional deficiencies the last few years. It's like, finally we got it back. We got a strong team. This is what we've been waiting for, and he doesn't get the chance. He didn't get the chance to, to try it one more time. Um, do you kind of see it that way, too? Like, you well, know that. yeah, you, you almost have to. It's hard not to. I mean, this, this group of personnel that, uh, that the new organization with Tag um, and Paul uh, went out, thank God. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it, 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 it's really a good group. I mean, you know, on offense, they bring in, uh, uh, you know, Brandon Marshall is a really great looking receiver, a great big guy, Carpenter is a big guard, I'm really impressed with him. They, they just line up a drafted um, Devin Smith in the second round. Come on, it's, it's not the light. Now, the defense, they were pretty good anyway, and they had no secondary. Mm-hmm. Now they really have secondary. They bring back Revis and Cromartie, Buster mm-hmm. Screen, Gilchrist, and then to have Williams fall out of the draft in your lap, I mean, wow. is really a, uh, a talented in a, in a football team. And, and I, it didn't happen with Rex. They just didn't do it that way. And so he got left out. And that's, uh, if it's, whether it's fair, I mean, who knows? It just happened. He has to deal with it. Um, now, the, the question these new guys are going to have to do, they're going to have to prove that they can take this outfit and win. Yeah. Because from what I saw against Detroit, they, they're, they're, they're a long ways away from that. Mm-hmm. The other thing that I don't want to hear, and I'm going to puff on this in the media, I don't want this ball to be blanked on the quarterback. But I think this football team can win 10 games. I don't care who the quarterback is. You just have to manage it. It's not easy. It's not easy because that's such a vital position. He most so. But, come on, this group is good. They are a good football team. Uh, and these weren't hard decisions. These weren't like they, 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 uh, they dug in the sand and found these guys. Come on, it's a draw Revis. Are you kidding me? Now, now that they're there, the pressure, in my opinion, is on this new, new organization. So I, I don't want to hear about next year. This, this, I, I just watched practice for a whole week, and I was at the, at the green and white uh, touch tab game. It was supposed to be a scrimmage, but they turned it into a green and white touch and touch game. Yep, and that's kind of tongue, that's a little tongue in cheek. They believe how I feel about it. Make make a long story short, um, this this football team is overall as talented as I've seen the New York Jets in quite some time. 
there, there's really some talented football players too. They really are. So I think that, uh, that there's really no reason they can't be successful. Uh, what do you think their biggest their biggest uh, weakness is? Well, obviously it's quarterback. We don't know. You know, Gino gets you know gets punched, and uh, I, I did think he was clearly ahead in the, the practices that I had watched. But Ryan Fitzpatrick can, can do the job. I kind of like Bryce Putty a little bit. I think he's a good young man. But the thing is, you have to manage it. Man, this is a good group of receivers. Uh, the talented running back in Ivory, a good offensive line. Mm-hmm. Getting away a little bit, still pretty good. And what should be an absolutely excellent defense. Excellent. They, they should finish in the top three. If they don't, I think they've underachieved. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you know, that, that, that's where they are. This is a, now, there's your, you got you got to figure it out. But uh, a, lot, a lot of positive things about this football team. Speaking of the the Dino punch, do you think the Jets did a good job of keeping the situation in house? It didn't seem like a lot of information really came out from the locker room, and the the coaching staff just supported and didn't talk to them, talk about it a lot. Um, Do you feel like they did a good job managing that? I I think they handled it about as good as you can. That's a tough. Mm -hmm. That's a tough situation. I don't think anyone expects that. You would think that two grown men that uh, could get that solved. Um, you know, whether Gino would have taken care of the, 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 the debt that he owed and get that squared away without ever uh, rising any level of provocation, let alone that level. But there, there is no level of provocation that, that that type of result is acceptable. That's just not. You know, you don't just, you know, cold cock a teammate. You don't do that. Maybe to get in a tussle and to grab somebody, sure, that's what happens. Fights on the field, those things happen, but not this one. Uh, so I think the Jets are, are handling it about as good as they can. Uh, Gino's got to, you know, put his shirt back on and stay out of the front pages of the paper. So that that would help and help him out a little bit as he decides to grow up. It's pretty a short trip. It actually, it's a long trip. He has to start trying it. Uh, start it. Start he has to start the steps. It'll be a long trip for him to grow up. That's for damn sure. From what I'm saying. Uh, but but. He was off to a pretty good start in what I did, what I uh, saw in training camp. But it's a shame that this happened. Uh, but to me, that's that, that, that's good. It, it, it slows him down, but it shouldn't stop him. It should not stop this game. It should. Do you think it's pretty amazing how the New York media seems to uh, spin getting punched in the face is all your fault? <laughs> That the story is really seems to vilify Dino and support IK, and that just seems ludicrous to me. And do you see it that same way when you're it, looking at things? No, oh, it's just I, I don't I don't know if it'd be fair to label New York media for that because I've seen it covered, uh, I've seen it, you know, uh, how how it was uh, portrayed in many different ways. I think the thing is is that. Um, I don't know if you want to vilify someone over there. So the, 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 the guy that really made the terrible mistake is IK. I mean, you just don't do this. I don't care. There's no level. There's no excuse. There's not. There's no level of disrespect that, that, that should bring you to this type of action. And so that's uh, – and how, any, how it's handled, I don't know. And they just have to figure it out. It's, it's a shame. It's a distraction. But as I said before, uh, it, it slows them. It shouldn't stop them. I, I just don't care. I don't have uh, I got a, just a couple more quick ones for you. Um, so you got one kickoff return left in you to win, to win the Super Bowl, and you can pick any of your past kick returners to, to, to run it back. Do you have anyone that stands out? Uh, no, there are, there are so many good ones. Uh, if I had, it's hard for me to, to not go with Leon Washington because you could do so many different. Things with him. I mean, he's run different types of returns. Uh, Justin Miller is extremely talented in that regard. Now, as a punt returner, I'd go with Santana Moss. As, as a kick returner, I'd go with Gino, with, uh, excuse me, with um, uh, Leon Washington. He gave me. But there were so many. Chad Morton was a great guy to have on your team. Uh, and I, I was so proud. We had nine different. Nine different guys that at one time or another led the NFL in returns. I don't think anybody will ever touch that. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that, you know, that's what 
always stood out to me. It always seemed like during, you know, your heyday, whoever was plugged in back there had success, and I think that really um, spoke a lot about what you did for the team. Um, yeah, I got one more question. I have two more. Um, anyone, any celebrity you ever met being, a, being, you know, who you are that you're like, I can't believe I met him, where you had your, uh, your, your fan moment, I guess? <laughs> That's kind of interesting. Uh, at games, at different games, you know, because of the fact that, you know, it's new work. So we would get people at the game. Um, I, it was, it, it was really kind of a, uh, a great thing because I'm a movie fan. It was a fun thing for me to have met Denzel Washington, to be able to talk to him, spend some time with him, and then just being in, in, a new, in New York and people that have met me. Uh, I, I sat and talked a long time in a restaurant with Tom Selleck. I had the same opportunity with Michael J. Fox, and so those things are kind of cool because I, I certainly enjoyed those people um, when I had those opportunities. So a lot of that just comes in New York just by being there and having, now, now that I'm, you know, I'm on television where I get recognized, and uh, mm -hmm. it's kind of cool. You know, yeah. So, uh, John and uh, 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 Walter came in, uh, Mark Walter, oh, wow. and, uh, and, and he was a Jet fan, so he bought us a drink, my girlfriend and I. It was pretty cool. <laughs> so yeah. I think... I've had a number of those experiences, and I'm, I'm always grateful for every one. But to tell you the truth, I'm just a, I'm really a fan. I'm really of what uh, I was able to experience. I mean, really appreciate it. Very nice. Um, and uh, this is the last question. Uh, you know, the last question I kind of I interviewed Wesley Walker recently, and this is my my last question I like to ask people. Um, if you were stuck on a desert island and you had to pick one coworker to live on an island with you, who would it be? One of your former coworkers, either player or coach. <laughs> oh, wow. A coworker. Or, you know, another coach or – when I say coworker, I mean – Another coach you was you coached with, or a player you coached for? If I had to pick someone because of his versatility and being such a good guy, uh, normally if I was going to spend a lot of time, I'd probably have to talk to take this way my girlfriend Patty Benelli, uh, I didn't work with her. Uh, ben Ben called we go, who uh, was my assistant was such a talented guy in a lot of different ways that uh, he's a West Point graduate, uh, was a uh, combat uh, pilot, a veteran in the Iraq War. Uh, he's now the, the head of the special minister of the Washington Redskins and a good friend. But there's so many different things he could do. I trust him because he, with him, we, we could figure a way to get out of there. Okay, we know how to build a cover. Yeah, he can figure a way. He's, <laughs> those West Point guys are pretty smart. He can find a way to get us a boat or make, a, make something that could fly, and he'd fly us out. So I, I would trust Ben Cowley. Okay, okay uh, Mike, I, you don't know how appreciative I am of your time. Um, I am going now, where to... Is this, I'm asking, where is this going to be? NewYorkJetsNews.com. What I will do is I will... I will go through this. I write a story. Basically, um, my story is you were pretty much the greatest special teams coordinator in franchise history, in my in hand, in my opinion, uh, during that entire era of football that you you were around. And I just kind of talk about your career highlights, throw quotes in there. Um, and what I like to do, um, uh, the first thing I will do when I'm finished is I'll put it on my my blog that no one even knows exists and send it to you so you can look it over, make sure it's factual, make sure you're happy with it. Um, my goal is to, whenever I do these things, is to paint, um, is to write a story that's a very positive experience for you. I want to make sure you're happy because if you're not happy with it, the next person's not going to want to do it. You know what I'm saying? So, sure. Um, so no, I'll I'll give, let me clear my email. Let me give you my email. Send it to me from this email, okay? Okay. It's my full name, James 
I go to Westhoff. I go by my middle name. It's James yep. Michael Westhoff, W-E-S-T-H-O-F-F, -F, mm -hmm. at gmail.com. Yep. I actually do have that. Okay. Um, you, you, okay. You, I, uh, I will send that to you. Uh, I don't use, uh, I would also, uh, a lot of the times put out the recording, but I don't know if I'll be able to do this this time because of the wind in the background. I, I had, yeah, I hear, you don't worry. I yeah, there's nothing I can do. Yeah, nothing you can do. Nothing, I can do. <laughs> nothing you can do, and that I, I more than you don't know how appreciative I am of your time. It's very nice of you, and I it probably take me like a week or so to get that written up, and you know I and then uh, when I yeah, thank you for everything. I appreciate it. All right, you're welcome. All right, if you're in the, if you've been to the game or you're in the press box, come and say hello and introduce yourself, please. Yes, we'll do, definitely. All right, all right. Thank you're you. welcome. Bye-bye.